welcome dear student on my channel today we'll see about the dissection of the brain so most of the viewers they ask me about the, do the next dissection that is about the brain so dissection of the brain so this is the brain is there that is about the good brain okay which shows the similar parts of the our brain like of the human brain so difference between the human brain and the good brain that first we'll discuss in case of the human brain human brain is a which is a rounded and its a stem is there this stem in case of human brain it is what towards the backbone it is a downward it is a vertical as a human uh, stand erect so that's why it is a vertical it is a downward well in case of the goat this what is the brain is there which is a elongated so it is a elongated brain in case of the goat and the stem is there which is a going towards the the horizontal it is going outward and towards the horizontal okay as uh, the goat is there which is a uh, uh, walking on the four legs so that's why here the what the it's a position is there that it is a horizontal that's why the stem is there which is a horizontal which is a outward next to this if you see that the weight of the uh, brain of the goat it is approximately 140 g okay which is a very less as compared to the human brain in case of the human brain the weight of the adult person's brain weight of the adult person brain that is approximately 13 to the 1400 g in which we find in case of the human brain we find a 100 billion neurons are present length of the human brain if we'll see the length of the human brain is a 15 cm approximately in case of the human the brain is there which is a larger and heavier as compared to the goat brain now we'll see the different parts of the brain okay so main for the brain is divided into the three parts one that is a forebrain is there midbrain is there and the hindbrain is there so about the forebrain forebrain consists of what it consists of the olfactory lobe so here the olfactory lobes are present okay then the cerebrum so this whole portion is there that is about the cerebrum okay and the diencephalon which is here inside when we'll dissect that that time we'll come to know so first we'll discuss about the forebrain then we'll go to the midbrain and then to the hindbrain so first about the forebrain so in case of the forebrain just now i said the olfactory lobes are there so here the olfactory lobes are present in case of the goat which is a more developed one which are the larger one in case of the goat the olfactory lobes are there which are the larger one why in because the animal usually the relay more upon their the senses and the abilities of the smell than in case of the human being so in case of human being the olfactory lobes are there which are the very less developed next to this here if you'll see that the this what is the olfactory lobe is there which is a highly reduced in case of the human being just now i said the olfactory lobe in case of human being highly reduced one now we'll see about the cerebrum so this is about what about the cerebrum which is the largest part of the brain about the brain approximately 85% portion of the brain which is covered by this cerebrum this cerebrum is there which is a divided right and the left so it is divided into the right and the left hemisphere okay so this is left hemisphere this is about the right hemisphere left side of the left side of the brain which control the right side of the body while the right side of the brain which controls the left side of the body so left side is there which is a uh, controls the speech then the conversation writing logical thinking etc while the right side is there which controls the artistic abilities and this cerebrum is divided into the left and the right hemispheres are there so by deep median long fissure here we observe that the deep what is the median fissure is a present when we will dissect that time we will come to know okay now here this what are the both the hemispheres are there which are internally connected by the corpus callosum so if we dissect that time we come to know that here the corpus callosum is there since so both the hemispheres are there which are internally connected to one another outer surface of this the cerebrum is there outer surface of the cerebrum which is called as a cortex and that is a gray matter while the inner one is there inner to that it is a what it is a medulla and it is a white matter when we'll dissect that time we'll come to know now this surface is there if you observe that the surface of this the cerebrum is there which is greatly folded by the gyri and the grooves called as a sulci now here maximum what are the folds what we find that here the maximum number of the nerve cells are present so this in this what are the folds are there which increases the area 
as the area is increases that by the number of the nerve cells are increases in case of human being we find that the maximum number of the folds are present here so those who are more intelligent in that case we find the maximum folds are present why because the maximum fold because of the maximum fold the maximum nerve cells are present that's why the person is more intelligent now the cerebrum is there if you see that cerebrum having the four lobes are there one that is a frontal lobe okay the next one that is about the here the occipital lobe is there then the the parietal lobe is there and the temporal lobe is there so like that here the four lobes are there just now i said it is a frontal lobe then the occipital lobe is there then the parietal lobe is there and then here the the temporal lobe is there okay if you will see the functions functions of this each lobe so function of the frontal lobe function of the frontal lobe is which is a expression of the emotions expression of the emotions intelligence will power memory personality area controls the voluntary movements is all functions are there about the this frontal lobe next to the frontal lobe if we we'll see about the parietal lobe so parietal lobe here both the what are the hemispheres are there so each parietal lobe is there which is a, again having the function that is a sensation of pain as well as a pressure temperature test etc okay they are mainly for the somaesthetic sensation of the pain so main function that is they are the mainly for the somaesthetic sensation of the pain pressure temperature test it means the gasta to receptor okay next to this parietal lobe if you see about the the temporal lobe so temporal lobe on this side so this portion is there which is a temporal lobe so temporal lobe function it contains the centers for the smell olfactory so here the olfactory is a present then hearing then the uh, as well as the speech so hearing means the auditory as well as the speech that is about the languages different languages reading emotions this all which are controlled by this the temporal lobe next to that if we'll see about the occipital lobe so this side is there which is a occipital so both the hemispheres are there about the occipital lobe so they have the visual areas mainly for the sensation of vision recognize which shape as well as the color so this is about what about the occipital lobe so what we find here this is a cerebrum is there this is about the cerebellum is there and this is about the medulla oblongata which control which continue to form the the spinal cord okay so here i will slowly dissect this so this what is the middle line is there so slowly you have to go on cutting like that it is a fresh brain of the goat so very soft so outer cortex inner to that the medulla so i will cut first the cerebrum so what we find here i can see here this whole what is the portion is there that is about the cerebrum both the hemispheres the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere of the cerebrum okay here it shows a presence of the number of the parieto occipital sulci are present so this is about the pineal gland it is located between the two cerebral hemispheres this gland secrete a hormone called as a melatonin which also called as the sleep hormone very important role is there in regulation of biological clock if we cut this continuously we'll find many more areas here
you can watch again here and this this is about the cerebrum which are having the many parieto occipital cell size are present so this portion is there which is a carpus callosum which is a connecting both the hemispheres inside that the lateral ventricle is present so this about the lateral ventricle present okay so just now i showed here this is about the pineal body okay then here the thalamus hypothalamus and epithalamus portions are present this is about the cerebellum cerebellum is also having the two hemispheres left and the right hemisphere here also we can find the this what are the gray and the white matter gray which is the cortex one layer is present while inner to that this about the medulla which is a white matter so they intermix and that's why it gives a tree like what are the structure so you can clearly observe this this is a fresh material that's why it's very soft so we can observe that here it shows the presence of the diencephalon so the four brain is there which is divided into the olfactory lobe that also we have checked then the cerebrum also we have checked and then the diencephalon which is in the this portion okay so this portion we can observe that the diencephalon is there which shows the presence of the thalamus epithalamus and the hypothalamus now we'll see about the mid brain mid brain which is located here mid brain which is a located in this portion okay so here this what are the between the diencephalon and between the pons of the ferroli okay between diencephalon and between the pons ferroli so here diencephalon and pons ferroli this portion is there which is called as a midbrain it involves the visual visual reflexes it involves the visual reflexes then the center for the auditory reflexes when it is necessary to move the head to hear the sound more distinctly it play important role so here what are the controlling the posture muscle tone coordination etc so which is controlled by what by this the mid brain so this now i said it is about the mid brain portion hind brain so hind brain starts from here hind brain starts from here so hind brain consists of what it consists of the pons ferroli so here this what are the pons ferroli is there then here it forms a medulla oblongata and then it continue to form the spinal cord so the hind brain is there which is in the posterior region hind brain which is in the posterior region consists of the pons ferroli pons ferroli consists of then the it shows the presence of the cerebellum and then the medulla oblongata what i said here about the hind brain which is the posterior region it consists of the pons ferroli okay both the side we can observe that then the cerebellum is present and the medulla oblongata is there okay which one we have taken the section in this this pons ferroli is there which is a rounded bulge under side of the brain stem it is under side of the brain stem then about the cerebellum so just now i said that this about the cerebellum having both the hemispheres are there left and the right which is the second largest part of a brain two lateral hemispheres just now i said central vermis is a present in this white and the gray matter which get intermixed just now i said here the white and the gray matter is there which get intermixed and gives a tree like pattern it shows a convolutions so gyri and the cells is there 
so approximately 30 million of the neurons which are lie in the cortex of this region function of this function of this the the cerebellum is there which maintain the equilibrium of the body posture then the balancing orientation coordination of the voluntary movement this all what functions are there about the cerebellum now this is about the medulla oblongata if you will see that this continue to form the medulla oblongata so it continue to form the medulla oblongata so this medulla oblongata it is what it is a posterior conical part which continue to the spinal cord function of the medulla oblongata which controls the involuntary activities like the the beating of the heart as well as the blood circulation as well as the breathing sneezing coughing omitting salivation etc this all what are the functions are there about the medulla oblongata next is about the spinal cord so this is about the spinal cord which continues downward which forms the central nervous system it is a part of the central nervous system which is a lower extension of the medulla function of this the spinal cord that is a conducting the impulses from the skin towards the brain so what are the any pinch is there to the skin then from the skin the message will be given to what to the brain so that is the function is there about the spinal cord same way conduction of the impulses from the brain to the muscles from the brain to the muscles as well as to the gland this all impulses are there which are passed from the brain through the medulla oblongata towards the, this spinal cord it is the center of coordination of reflex action this the spinal cord is there which is the center of coordination of reflex action so dear student i have explained this everything about the brain okay different parts of the brain with the different functions okay so different parts different functions what we have dissected to this brain with the help of the goat brain we understood about the the different parts of the brain of the human as well as different functions okay so everything we have learned in detail watch different videos on my channel in that you can find the dissection of the kidney dissection of the heart dissection of the testes as well as number of the videos based on the practical also I have made as well as how to draw diagram easily easy tricks are given in that particular videos okay everything is given in the description box all the links are given so please do watch that if you like my channel subscribe and share with your friends so that everyone can get the benefit of the same thank you